Almost everything, but not quite everything, because Alvin Kamara is the man. There's no doubt about that. But let's be very, very clear. This guy in his third year in the National Football League, 125 receptions last year, 104 receptions the year before, all three years in the National Football League, 1,100 yards, 1,200 plus yards, then 1,400 plus yards last season. Now, it helps that Drew Brees is throwing you the football, because obviously if it was Blake Bortles or somebody like that, those numbers might not be there. But it doesn't take away from the greatness that this guy has put on display. He wants it. He's got the kind of attitude to go right. get it. He's incredibly confident in himself. He's not shy about it, nor unap or apologetic about it. All of those things taken into consideration, along with the fact that you look at him, he shows up time and time and time again. Give him credit where credit is due. It was bold for him to want to be that $20 million man. If you're a Julio Jones or somebody like that, you're smiling because if he's getting that, imagine what Julio is going to get. He definitely increased the market. And give Odell Beckham Jr. some props as well because he got $95 million, $65 million in guarantees, if I remember correctly. Right. And so when you get a contract like that, as great as Odell Beckham Jr. is, you can make an argument that he ain't this dude, Michael Thomas, in terms of production. Right. And so because of that, those kind of things helped assist Michael Thomas in getting this money. It's well-deserved. It has been earned, but the job is not finished. Yeah, so it's, it's been earned. I'm happy for him. He deserves it. And I'm just going to present the other side of the argument. The fact of the matter is he's not a deep, a big play threat. And that's what's most important at, at the wide receiver position. His yards per game is tantamount to what a tight end produces as far as yards per – or not yards per game, his yards per catch okay. is what a tight end does. And that's not as big a part of the offense as somebody who can blow the top off of a defense like, say, Tyreek Hill or yes. Odell Beckham Yards per catch was at 11.2. Yeah, and right. that's um, close to what um, Ertz was doing, something like that, which it's, it's impressive and it's respectable, particularly on that team where they don't have necessarily that big deep – deep play guy to open up for him. It makes it even more impressive that Thomas can do that. And I think he deserves his money. I'm happy he's got his, he got his money in. He's certainly set the table for um, Julio Jones, who I think should surpass this if we're basing it off of talent. And you brought up Alvin Kamara, which is an interesting point because we're looking at his contract now, and he was a third-round pick. So he got, um, what is it, 3.8 over four years. Mm -hmm. We talk about running backs that need to hold out, particularly with Ingram going um, to Baltimore. Now all the load is going to fall on Alvin Kamara to be both backs, essentially, the big play, or excuse me, the third down back and the every down back. And he's been underpaid for so many years now. He's the guy who they should be looking at, and I think we agree that Alvin Kamara is probably more important to this offense than even Michael Thomas, even though Michael Thomas is almost the entirety of their passing It's offense. interesting that you bring that up because he's more important not just because of his skill set and what he brings to the table, but because of what Drew Brees does not bring to the table. Drew Brees is a thrower. This man is a pocket passer. He's not a scrambler. He ain't running away from anybody. This brother stands in the pocket, he reads defenses, and he picks you apart. He's like an elevated version of what Kenny Stabler was back in the day in the 70s for crying out loud with the Oakland Raiders in the early 80s. But the bottom line is this. When you look at a guy like Alvin Kamara, that's what makes him special because because of the threat he is not just running the football, but pass catching out of the backfield and the fact that Drew Brees is somebody that could dip and dunk right. to him. It keeps defenses so, honest, which opens the floodgates for Michael Thomas right. to produce the Ted Ginn Juniors of the world and others. By the way, Zach Ertz, you bring him up. He averaged 10 yards per reception right. with his 116 receptions last so, season. So the Kamara point is perfect because Drew Brees, as you get older, the arm strength depletes a little bit, and he hasn't been as good deep down the field as he has been in the past. But to have an effective offense, you need to make big plays. Mm -hmm. And Alvin Kamara is somebody that you can throw a screen pass to, and it might turn into 40 yards, might yeah. turn into 30 yards or something like that. A guy you can put in a slot and give him an option route, and mm -hmm. he'll make a big play out of it. And that, I mean, that really helps for a guy who doesn't have the deep arm strength. And when your number one receiver is Michael Thomas, who I think he's around two yards mm -hmm. as far as separation is concerned, yep. which is not all that impressive. When he's not going to get the separation, you need a guy like Alvin Kamara to provide those big plays. Well, here's the deal. When we look at the New Orleans Saints, right, because this is the debate show, but obviously you're going to start off with the news of the day because this dude just broke a couple of hours mm -hmm. ago. And you got to start off the show with this. But let's point out something that's incredibly pivotal now. You're the New Orleans Saints. You got to get it done. Fluke play by the Minnesota Vikings, the divisional playoff. Ultimately, you lose that game. You should have been in the AFC, NFC Championship game against Philadelphia. I believe the Saints had a better shot of beating the Eagles than anybody the year the Eagles won the Super Bowl because I think the experience of a Drew Brees with the talent that they had on offense, you have the potential to walk on a road into Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia and potentially get that done. Minnesota with Case Keenum, that wasn't going to happen, okay? So we understand that. But now, last year, even though the pass interference that 
that wasn't. Right. That 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 Sean Payton made a fool of himself making so much noise over. They missed the call. They were flagrantly wrong and all of that stuff. But going at the NFL the way that he did, I mean, they weren't the official on the field. Can't reverse right. the damn thing. They, they still had a chance to win after and that And they still call. had a chance yeah. to win after that call. In the end, the last two years, you can make a legitimate argument. The Saints should have been in the Super Bowl the last two years. And so when you look at it from that perspective, Drew Brees got his money a couple of years ago. We know that, and he deserves every damn penny. Now you pay Michael Thomas. You got to pay Alvin Kamara. Absolutely. He's 23 years of age, and he's a stud. 23. Thomas is 25. He's 23 years old and balls the way he's ball. At some point in time, you're going to have to pay him. But you're paying all of this money, what you got to show for it? Well, that's you got to get it done. That's a good question. So now with Thomas in the fold, will the Saints win out the NFC? Well, me, to me personally, I, I'm not sure they'll win out the NFC. I think they should be the favorites personally. I think they should be the favorites over the Rams. Um, I think they should be the favorites over the Falcons, even though the Falcons' offense should be even more important. I just don't know if defensively they'll be ready after all the injuries they suffered last year. I'm looking at Chicago defense, but I'm not a, I'm not sold on Mitchell Trubisky. Right. He's no scrub, but I'm not yeah. sold on him. Plus, Aaron Rodgers is back in that division. And, oh, by the way, Kirk, Keen, uh, Kirk Cousins getting $28 million a year. Could you please, pretty please, show up and do something? I mean, <laughs> Making 28 million, they're losing, missing the playoffs, and still got a smile like the sun will shine tomorrow, even in Minnesota, for crying out loud. And then you've got Dallas and Philadelphia. But when you look at New Orleans, because of the presence of Drew Brees, even though you could throw Russell Wilson in the equation, but he doesn't have yeah. the help that yeah. Drew Brees has in New Orleans, because of Drew Brees and Sean Payton and that combination, I think that the Saints should be the, the favorite. NFC. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.